Hey guys, it's Leah from Using Essential Oils Safely, and I would like to talk to you about essential oil extraction methods. Now, we often refer to essential oils as concentrated substances, and sometimes it's not until you really understand how they're made that you can respect just how concentrated that they are. Sometimes it can take a ton, literally a ton of plant matter, to produce just an ounce of essential oil. And by plant matter, I mean either the bark, or the leaves, or the flowers, or the roots, or even the resin, whatever plant parts that are used to make the essential oil. Cinnamon bark is made from the bark of the cinnamon tree, and cinnamon leaf is extracted from the leaves. So you do have different composition, and the end result is different, slightly, but it is different. And so it is important to know what plant part is being used in the steam distillation process, or whichever process is being used. Um, sometimes it does produce a different result. So there are four ways that essential oils are extracted, and the most common method is steam distillation. Um, this method involves steaming the plant matter for a determined amount of time under a specific pressure and with a certain temperature to release the oil. And the distillers have this down to a science, and they know all of the variables involved for each specific plant to extract the most oil out of that plant matter. And the oil collected is officially an essential oil, and there are also waters that are also produced during the steam distillation, and those are referred to as hydrosols. Now, they used to just throw all those waters away, thinking, you know, they weren't necessary. Um, actually, the distillers, I think, realized the value, but there was, there was no demand. And fortunately, um, hydrosols are being more valued and appreciated, and I will definitely be talking more about hydrosols in another video. But it's the steam distillation method that produces the hydrosols. Now, CO2 extraction is similar to steam distillation, except for liquid CO2 is used instead of water. And after the distillation, the CO2 is turned back into a gas. Um, they basically combine the liquid CO2 in the plant matter. And, and when that process is done, it's turned back into a gas, leaving the plant matter and the essential oil behind. Now this does produce a different aroma. Um, many people believe it's a more pleasant aroma. And some people um, notice that the CO2 extraction um, version it doesn't really last maybe quite as long as a steam distillation version. Um, I don't think it's that much to really worry about, but it's just a little, um, little tip. Now cold pressing is another method, and this is most commonly used for lemons, limes, oranges, you know, the different fruits where they do use the rinds. And this method um, involves mashing the grinds in water and often letting it sit a while and so the oils can float to the top and these are collected. Um, now because pesticides are sprayed, you know, right on the rinds, it's important to seek organic options for cold pressed essential oils if you're going to be using them on your skin. Now, I tend to use the citrus oils um, in cleaning products that I make or to diffuse for energy. So um, I personally haven't found the need to really seek out those organic options, but for those of you that um, would like to know that, um, it is a consideration. Um, as far as organic options for other methods, you know, a lot of times um, they really don't the pesticides don't come across in the essential oil. Uh, Robert Tisserin referred to tea tree as a specific example of one that they do spray, but they do wait about six months after spraying before they harvest and process. And at that point, th there's really no pesticides left behind. Um, but I guess organic versus non-organic is going to be a separate video. Um, solvent extraction is the fourth method. And purists really don't consider this a true essential oil, and these are typically labeled as absolutes. Now, this is due to the fact that the plant material is mixed with a solvent, and sometimes there can be a trace amount of solvent left behind. Um, it's generally under 1%, but it is there, just so you know, you're aware of that fact. Um, and many aromatherapists generally avoid recommending absolutes to women who are pregnant or to even children because of the small percentage of absolute that can be remaining. And when you apply it to your skin, 
you know, I guess there's a small risk of, you know, irritation. But if you're deleting it, you know, it's probably not that, um, that big a deal. But it is a consideration, just so that you know. Now, it's important to note that all essential oils are considered pure once they're processed in these manners and produced, um, regardless of the quality of the plant that is steam distilled or cold pressed, they are pure essential oils. So I hope you found that enjoyable. Those are the different methods of essential oil extraction, and I hope you learned something. Please leave me a comment. If you have any questions, I would love to hear them, and I hope I can answer them. Thanks.